our next speaker this evening is Tim Bolger. Tim is working from Tim is working from the Public Relations Manual. It's Project Two, Speaking Under Fire, and the timing parameters, Glenn, is six to eight minutes in the beginning, and then eight to ten minutes Q and A. So we may not necessarily get to our last speaker this evening. Our last speaker may have to be postponed. Recently, Tim had a video that was taken down due to hate speech. It was certainly not controversial, yes, but hateful, no. Tim will take this actual event and justify why YouTube was wrong, and he was right. It is amazing how one person can be complaining, take down or threaten to take down almost 10 years of video. This will be recorded and it will also be put on Tim's website. The YouTube takedown, the YouTube takedown, please help me welcome to the lectern, Tim Bolger. Over this last weekend, I was absolutely shocked by what happened. You see, I tape a lot of videos for a place called the College of Complexes. Could you please, Roger, could you please turn on the projector and show them what the College of Complexes website is? What the College of Complexes is, is a free speech forum. We have Saturdays every presentation at 6 p.m. at the Dapper's East Restaurant on Addison Street in Chicago. For those of you who may not know where it's at, it's about two miles west of Wrigley Field, where my favorite baseball team, the Cubs, play. But that's quite something else. We have a format every week where we go in and we have a speaker who will speak, and he does this presentation. There's a long question and answer period. And then we have, at the end of the session, a chance for you to rebut the speaker, whether it be on or off topic. Roger, if you could click on that list of upcoming programs up there, please. I'll show you a little bit about what we've got coming. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see we've got Andrew and the Virtuous Selfishness, the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, folks. Keep going, Roger. History of free speech, Bughouse Square debates, United America, country over party, Keep going up, Roger. What in Bannon, Sam Harris, Russia Gate and Pizza Gate, Death Rose None, People of God series of books. We've actually had a publisher who takes his authors and actually tries to run them through us before they actually go out on the road because they know this is going to be the hardest place to go. Well, Roger, if you can go to the uh, next tab where it says Lecture Library there, please. I post everything online, and if you go to the camera at that last flag, you will see everything here. But look at what happened on May 25th. Right there, so it's the Sandy Hook Pol Posner versus Fetzer lawsuit. The video has been taken down due to YouTube's policy on hate speech. You see, what we had was a speaker who was relatively well known and a book author on why Sandy Hook never happened. Posner was a guy whose son was killed in the thing and filed the lawsuit against Fetzer because Fetzer was propagating and spreading lies. At the time we did this, I thought, well, maybe nothing's going wrong. Maybe there wasn't too much controversy. So I just went ahead and I posted the video anyway. Well, sure enough, what happened was that video, within a three-week time, was over 3,000, 4,000 hits. I was getting comments this long. And it was starting to get very popular. And I says, why is it this thing is getting so popular? What's the controversy? You know, my other first most popular video was the moon landing hoax. What the heck's going on? Because for the longest time, the videos that were most popular were the ones that this club has done, like how to win the Toastmasters Table Topics Contest, how to win the International Speech Contest, and several Toastmasters content that I have put up. And realistically, for the longest time, the other one that was really popular was one when I had a gentleman by the name of John Kutchover doing the Thorium Energy Alliance. Well, you know, YouTube, I think you made a mistake on this one. 
because there wasn't any hate speech involved. What Fetzer did was he made his case real well, and Fetzer kind of got taken apart during the question and answer period. And then there was a lot of pro-conspiratorial people there and a lot of anti-conspiratorial people there. And YouTube took it down, probably based on the complaint of one person, maybe Posner, who then said, you're propagating hate speech and probably never watched it. Because when I posted this video to YouTube, like I usually do every week, my Aunt Mary said, I, have you, I am ashamed of you to post this video. How can you do something else? Another relative of mine, Lady Tony Felton, also posted this type of stuff. I live, I know half people and relatives in the area, and this is really hurtful. Well, you know, I have to say, I, I feel sorry for you, you know. And I, I, I apologize, you know, if, if I've caused offense or anything else, but at the same time, what's this country coming to? I mean, really, it was a very open discussion, a very open thing that, you know, if you can't take a little bit of an idea, dislike it, but then get a chance to rebut it, what's it about? You see, to me, our First Amendment, and like many of our soldiers say, I may not like what you're saying, but I will fight for you to say it. As a company, YouTube's private, and they're very interested in keeping their PR. And if there's any inkling of hate speech, according to the popular media now, they just might remove it. And the thing is, I've got over 900 videos up. 900 of these things. A lot of them are from the College of Complexes. And if they dig in, you'll see a lot more than that. For example, if you really dig in, there's a rebuttal where I said, the North should separate from the South and we should have a revolution. Our next speech was a gentleman by the, by who rebutted me. He says, I thought this was already settled by McClellan and Lincoln. Which, in context, was probably a little bit comedic. But if you just took that one speech out of context, it could be considered hate speech. What I, my point of the matter is this. Watch your content, but if you're really gonna believe in something, take it. YouTube was wrong because they never looked at the video, but I don't expect them to, because there's over 500 hours per minute going into their site. And probably the only way they can take these things down is with complaints from people. And it's kind of unfortunate that one person complaining could result in this or even a suspension of my YouTube account. I've had a little trouble with YouTube in the past over copyright content, and usually it works out very well. But my point of the matter is this. Roger, if you can go to that last tab, go down here where it says Jim Fetzer speaks to the College of Complexes at 123news.net. There's the video in its entirety. Posted, Jim Fetzer posted it to another website so you can still see it. I find it kind of ironic that YouTube's taking it down, but yet at the same time, a few clicks away, it's available and ready to go. And this should teach you something, you know. Almost anything you put online or anything that you can save up Put up. Somebody can take it, post it to another website. In this case, I'm glad he did because now I can. I've reposted the link on my Facebook page saying, "Here's where it can be found." Because if you look at it and watch it, you're going to get. Like, you're going to laugh your head off. I think Mr. Fetzer is a little nuts, but he is a good speaker. I consider him, at least for the time I was at the college, very funny and very jovial. But at the same time, the content he was talking about put in the light of, of a, a kid who was killed at Sandy Hook. You know, Tim, maybe <coughs> you were wrong in thinking about posting everything, but you know, maybe it's because of hindsight now rather than foresight. And you know, 
to Mr. Posner, you know, I, I, I would love to have you come speak at the College of Complexes and present your side of the case and why Fetzer's wrong. And if anything else, our schedule right now is full of a lot of conspiracy theorists, libertarians, a couple of book authors. We need some good speakers here. So if any of you have a good idea or a political philosophy and can speak on it, I'd like to see you here. We've had a couple of people in this room already go through the process and watch it. And I applaud you because this audience is tough. This audience can really rally, rile you up. And they even rile me up half the time. But watch what you post. Think and make sure that if you're going to convey a message, you know, make sure you know what you're doing, Mr. Toastmaster. Are you doing Q&A? And I'm doing a Q&A. Oh. Okay. So all right. I, Who's so got a question? I've got a question, first of all. Yes. So does YouTube have a clear-cut policy, whether it's one person complaining about a video that's been posted, and do they take that and go, okay, well, one person said they didn't like it, or they consider it hate speech, and then they withdraw it, take it off? Or does it have to be X amount of people to withdraw a video? That I do not know, but um, they, you know, they've had policy. If you can scroll up a little bit, you'll find the guidelines there, you know, against hatred of individuals or any groups based on the following attributes, age, caste, disability, and so on and so forth. It's the last one on the list that they got you on. Victims of a major violent event and their okay. kids. There you go. Mm -hmm. That might be why it was removed. Absolutely. Yeah. There were an awful lot of people impacted by that yeah. violence yeah. and would take offense. Okay. So was and his somebody saying that it never happened, especially. So was his was his intent you know, it's like people say that, you know He wrote a book. He wrote a book saying that Sandy Hook never happened. Mm -hmm. What he did was he said it was a FEMA event staged by the government and he presented his evidence which me need not knowing much about, I went and po I had him post it. So but, Sandy Hook did not happen as a terrorist event? But yes, he said it was a... Obviously the people didn't die. No, right? no. He's, he's saying, he was saying it was all staged. It never happened. Oh my God. See, that's a, you know, that's like a borderline, okay, when you say freedom of speech, but if you're twisting the truth, right, right, that, you know, freedom of speech doesn't really apply to you. And it's like a man yelling fire. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Was I inappropriate for posting that video? Yes. 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 And do you think an apology should be necessary for posting that video? Well, I would, I would do it. I would. And I guess I'll just say for, for, for Mr. Posner the and the people who were impacted, by this video, I'll apologize for posting the content, but doing so just because I've done it all in the past and I've never been through this event before, but I will apologize. I just, I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I feel for you um, and the audience sentiments be there. Yes, any more questions? Yeah, I feel the you could give them a form at your co a college of complex, but don't don't magnify that by posting it online. You should you should develop something a policy for you okay. to serve yourself that for not having for not uh, for, yeah because we usually post everything online. I always ask first whether they be posted and. You know, I've edited out parts where people have posted their comments or speeches on my mail. Yes, please. Well, did you know ahead of time how inflammatory that the topic was going to be about a real event that I actually had? Um, at the time, no. I just went and, went and filmed them thinking this guy's a little bit nuts, but he's giving a, making a good case for a falsehood. And then during the Q&A session, uh, my first question was, what did you think about the Nazi 
concentration camps. And when I said, no, there was not six million Jews killed there, you remember what it said? I said, okay. A number of people came up, how could you say something? And he said, well, how could you not believe the truth? And during that q and it was made very clear that the speaker was a little bit crazy and, 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 and just going on a, a radical thing. But, you know, maybe I've become immune to it because I've seen a lot of these conspiracy theories before. You know, like Mr. Aranda here is going to be giving another talk on the moon landing hoax. And I know that the photographs he's going to use is over and under exposure and, and, and can clearly be debunked. We have people there who think that 9-11 uh, was, was done by the Bush administration because they were trying to get out of the asbestos claim deal and that the building had been rigged by explosives. Now some of these guys are, are friends of mine. I know them, they're, they're good personally, they have ethics, but they just believe some crazy things. And to hear them speak, they usually have enough rope to hang themselves on. And that's usually the case with most of these conspiracy theorists. Now, for the audience who may not come out to the college of complexes, I do post everything up pretty much. And maybe I should have had an inkling when this video was getting so controversial and getting the comments of maybe I should have taken it down myself at the time. But I didn't really see anything wrong with it because he was clearly debunked during the rebuttal period. And there were a lot of good questions. Um, how many people, how many, speaking of rebuttal, so how many people after, because they get what, five minutes? Usually it depends on the amount. We go from three to five minutes depending on how many want to speak with so how many? So how many people actually rebutted? Honestly, don't remember, but I think it was like 10 or 12. 10 or 12 rebutted? Yes. That's more than normal for, for college, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, we also tell our speakers to come within an hour. I mean, we've had the Chinese ambassador, or the Chinese, I'm sorry, the, the Chinese Council of Chicago speak at this place. And during that whole scene, he had his people recording names and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the titles of everybody who spoke, even in the rebuttal period. That's been posted. I honestly thought China would, uh, the China, and the Chinese ambassador would, would not like what he saw, but I was very careful. But what was interesting was how much surveillance was done by his assistant and his, and his thing. That's also up there if you want to take a look at it, if you put the Chinese message. Yes, Valerie. I'd make a suggestion that uh -huh. these things are part of your your complex to the speakers. Okay. And if they're going to talk about any of this, if they should be allowed to speak. That's what I was going to say, too. It's not who recorded it. It's they shouldn't have even been allowed to get up there and do Have a criteria speech. for it. And then you're, you're responsible because it's your video. Right. Um. Okay. Yes. So, living in the United States, we can talk about this topic. Even right. if it might be a calling, we still have the right to talk about That's it. That's right. However, this is not the government. YouTube is That's a personal right. it's a private company. company, so they can do their own guidelines. Exactly. And it's, they don't condone to this style right. of speech, and they have every right to right. monetize or completely take you off. Actually, so. they're absolutely right. And that's why I really have to try to comply with the law. Like I said, I regret posting them. Yes? One other thing to think about. People will watch something and might not read the comments or listen to the, what you call the rebuttal. Right. You think that took care of it? A lot of people never bothered no. to get to that point. So you can't count on right. uh, people understanding the other side of the story because of the book. Well, if you look at my Facebook page, there was clearly some comments from my relatives that saying, you know, just based on the description, um, just that type of thing happening. And, you know, again, as a videographer, you know, this isn't the first time I, I've faced a lot of controversy. I mean, you know, where were people giving speeches who didn't want to record? In the, in, the, in the think of it, I had one lady who was advancing in the speech contests. And she did not want to be, she wanted a recording for herself so she could improve. 
but she said, don't post the video because I'm being stalked by a boyfriend, an ex-boyfriend, and I don't want him knowing where I'm at. Other people have gone to the college of complexes, called me up and asked me to take a video down. No problem, I'll go ahead. Other Toastmasters people, when I recorded them too, have also said, please, you know, five, six years, seven years later, said, I need this removed from the contest because their online image may not be impacted. So this isn't the first time that I faced, you know, questions about censorship or whatever. The most interesting thing that happened was I used a very little segment from a Beatles song. They banned the video worldwide until I removed it. And they didn't really, you know, take down the copyright violations or anything else. But, you know, I have several church videos, too, that we record the whole service. Several copyrighted songs are sung during our church service. And I believe they may have performance rights to the songs. But I don't make the videos public because they're used for self-evaluation purposes. Much like this meeting here, when I give you guys the link to our club members, and maybe some other who've spoken, um, we just don't make it public because some of you don't really want a lot of your speeches made public or, may, or maybe something down the time. Yes, Valerie? That's the other thing then. If you let anybody speak what they want to at, your, at the College of Complex, then it's fine. But to get on YouTube, you're not going to post it if it doesn't meet Falls in one of those purpose. categories. So they can talk about anything they want in the restaurant. Yeah. But sometimes I may have to use my own judgment a little more often whether the content we post. Yes, Roger. Tim, is, is Vimeo a uh, more uh, fle flexible type of platform? I've used Vimeo and you could use it, but what I found is that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Jerry, you want to go? Like, you know, time's up. Gonna finish your answer and then All right. we need to wrap up anyway. I've got a Vimeo account. Uh, it can't be accessed as widely as YouTube. Right. And there's another place I can go put them up, archive.org. But again, I have the same problem. It's just not readily accessible. And there's a lot of people now who watch this. I think my present subscriber account's over 600 right now. And I've never really monetize it. They just <coughs> see what's posted and put a link up on YouTube. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. If you have any additional comments for Tim, please let him know before he leaves.